Okay, the table shows the position of a cyclist. You have T seconds going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in meters, S, 0, 1.4, 5.1, all the way to 25.8. What we want to do is we want to find the average velocity for each time period. So for the first interval, okay, so on the interval going from 1 to 3, okay, what we want to do is we want to find the average velocity. And so that means we're going to take S of 3 and subtract S of 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So if you look up here, what is the output for 3? Well, the output for 3 is 10.7. So we have 10.7. And what is the output for 1? It's 1.4. And then 3 minus 1 is going to give us 2. So we end up getting 9.3 divided by 2, which gives us an average velocity of 4.65 meters per second. Okay, for number two, we're going on the interval from two to three. So we want to find the average velocity. So in this case, we have S of three minus S of two divided by three minus two. So what is the output for 3? Well, the output for 3 is 10.7 minus the output for 2 is 5.1. And 3 minus 2 is 1. So 10.7 minus 5.1 is going to give us 5.6 meters per second. Okay, let's take a look at 3. Okay, this is on the interval between 3 and 5. So the average velocity here is going to go from S of 5 minus S of 3 divided by 5 minus 3. And the output for 5 is 25.8. And we're subtracting the output of 3, which is 10.7. And that's divided by 2. So we end up getting 15.1 divided by 2, which is equal to 7.55 meters per second. And then number 4. Okay, this is on the interval that's going from 3 to 4. So to find the average velocity there, it's going to be S of 4 minus S of 3 over 4 minus 3. And so the output for 4 is 17.7. The output for 3 is 10.7. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we end up with 7 meters per second. Okay, now part B, we want to use the graph of S as a function of T to estimate the instantaneous velocity when T is equal to 3. So let's go ahead and put this information in Desmos. So we're going to create our table. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. And then we have 0, 1.4, 5.1, 10.7, 17.7, and 25.8. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to make sure that this creates a line so it connects those points. Okay, and then let's change our uh, 
viewing rectangle to go from zero, let's say to seven. And then our Y values go from zero to 25.8. So let's make that 40. Okay, so here is our graph. So let's go ahead and copy that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to use the graph of s as a function of t to estimate the instantaneous velocity for when t is equal to 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line. That passes through the following points. Okay, so again, we're estimating here. So we could either draw a right triangle. Move it closer to that line here so it's tangent. Okay, or we can estimate some points on our line. So if we pick some points on our line here and we're estimating, let's say that this point is on the line and that represents 2 and then 4 because again we're estimating okay and then we're gonna pick this point here which is we'll say is 5 and then 23 so we want to be able to find the slope of that line so what we can say is using the points 2, 4, and 5, 23 from the approximate tangent line, the instantaneous velocity is going to be the following. So we know that we can take y1, which is 23, minus y2, which is 4, sorry, y1, and then that's 5 minus 2, which is going to give us approximately... 6.3 meters per second. And again, the horizontal line represents T and the vertical line represents S.